We're continuing now with example 12. If you haven't watched the video that comes straight before this, where I've started section 10.5, uh, there's quite a lot of preamble about the way to approach these questions in this chapter in general. So you might want to go back and watch the first half of that video. This video, I'm just going to do example 12. And I'm, uh, this is one of the four examples that deal that, that, that will cope with most of the difficult questions in chapter 10. Now, this is the one out of everything really in this textbook that I like the least. Personally, my head just finds it difficult. I, 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 there's something about the way that these questions work which is quite uncomfortable. That should really be a, a, a positive thing for you. If you're trying to learn this from me, I'm saying, look, I find this uncomfortable, but I know that I can solve the exam questions. And I know that I can solve the exam questions because even the bits that I find difficult to get my head around about the physics and the things that I find a bit uncomfortable, I know that I can apply the method and the method's gonna get the answer out. Now, actually, because I've been doing this a while, I know that deep down I understand the physics if I stop and think, but whenever I come to teach this to a class, this is the example where I think, oh, hang on, how does this work? Why does this work? I'm not quite sure, I have to remind myself. And then I do get my, my, my head around it. In fact, just this week, though, I was teaching this to a class and I had to stop halfway through and stare at the textbook and there's a big uncomfortable silence while everyone waited for me to get my head together and see what was going on because I just thought that I'd said something wrongly and I hadn't, as it happened, it was all more or less correct. But it's just something that doesn't click nicely in my head. If you're finding that that's the same for you, for this example or for another part of the textbook, it's perfectly possible to get to the point where you can answer the exam questions. And sometimes, not always, very rarely in mechanics, but sometimes the thing to do is follow the method through, go through the same steps for the questions as you've done in the example and in your notes, and then go back and think about the theory, and the theory will come after you've got the method sorted, okay? Often in mechanics, it's it's uh, it's sort of almost indispensable that you need to get some of the theory at least, but um, sometimes that'll work. So, example 12, and here's how it works. This is what I call a lift problem, right, or an elevator problem. Uh, in this case, they've got a scale pan, and again, if you just in case you haven't watched the last video, what we mean by that is an old-fashioned set of weighing scales, right? So you've got a set of weighing scales, and on this side, I've got two weights. Uh, the bottom one is B, and the top one is A in this example, and we're weighing them against something on this side, okay? So that's what's going on, and it could be accelerating up and down and wobbling up and down, couldn't it? And it could be sitting still. So that's what we've got, and it's the same sort of idea as if those two objects were sitting in a lift, and the lift was moving up or moving down. We're just worrying about this side of the, of the system. We're not, you know, none of this is relevant for the example that we're gonna do, just this part, okay? Um, so mathematically, it's exactly the same situation as if we've got two things sitting in a lift and the lift is moving up or down, or indeed staying still, all right? Now, we're using Newton's third law that states for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So we know this one from if I have an object sitting on a table, with the weight pushing down, there's a reaction force pushing upwards, okay? And those two forces are balanced out. Um, yeah, those, those two forces are balanced out because there's no acceleration going up and down in that system, okay? Um, now, here's the situation, and I'm gonna go, st I'm gonna go straight in and tell you the, the reason that my head finds this bit uncomfortable. And then we'll follow the example through and make sure that we can do everything here. In this situation, the scale pan would have a weight, so there's a force pushing down. B would have a weight, so there's a force pushing down. A would have a weight, so there's a force pushing down. The string is holding the whole thing up, so there's a tension pulling upwards. Okay, so far so good. Now, if this uh, if this string wasn't there, if this thing was just sitting on the ground, B would be pushing up on A as well, wouldn't it? The, you know, If you just imagine that part of the system there, A is just sitting on top of B, so there's a reaction from B acting on A, okay? Um, and there's a reaction from the scale pan acting on B in the same way. B is sitting on the scale pan and, and there's a reaction pushing upwards, okay? Um, now, there's also a, a, a force, if there's an acceleration going on, there's, a, there's a, a, the, the, the forces on B uh, kind of might change, right? So if this thing starts scooting upwards, there is a force pushing down on B, which isn't necessarily just the weight of A. Okay, now that's the thing that I don't really like the, the physics of, but that's you know that's that's the case. Um, there's a. Uh, it's also the situation that dealing with the forces on B 
is a bit fiddly because there's lots of forces pushing from different directions. It's much easier if I'm just asked to deal with the forces on A. Now, like the last example, it's perfectly fine to deal with the whole thing as one system or to deal with the forces on A separately to the full, uh, you know, just deal with A on its own, just deal with B on its own, or just deal with the scale on its own. So if I just draw out the forces, if I just draw out A, I've got the weight pushing down, and I've got R pushing up. So pushing down in the example in the book, in example 12 on page 170, A is 400 grams, so 400 G. Now that's 400 times G, this is uh, weight times gravity pushing down. The force is 400 G newtons, where that G is 9.8, you know, 9.8 meters per second per second, the acceleration due to gravity is 400 G pulling down. And there's a reaction force pushing up, okay? And these are the forces on A. So forces on A, um, it tells us in the question, so we can so at A, we'll consider vertical motion, we'll apply F equals MA. It tells us in the question that we're going vertically, we're accelerating vertically, so we do R minus 400 G equals mass, which is uh, 0.4 if we put it in kilograms, oops, sorry, so not 400 G, 0.4, because we need to be in kilograms, 0.4 um, mass times acceleration, which is 0.5, and that there is an equation which will give us R, there's only one unknown in that equation, and that unknown is R, okay? So that reaction force is the force exerted by B on A, okay? So, so far, so good. I can deal with the forces on A, and as it turns out, the one equation has given me one of the pieces of information that they've not told me in the question, nice and easy. Problem is the question, if we look at it in part B of the question, they're, exact, they're asking for the force exerted on, on B by A, not by B on A, it's the other way around. And this is where Newton's third law comes in. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if B is pushing up on A with a force of R, then A is pushing down on B with a force of R. So there we go, we're all sorted. Once we found R, that's our answer to part B. So I'll wait for the clock. Right, we'll, uh, we'll see if I get around to editing out the chimes of that clock, right? Um, so, the force exerted by B on A is the same as the force exerted by A on B because of Newton's third law, okay? So, the way that we're always going to deal with these things is that if there's an object in the middle, we're basically going to ignore the object in the middle. We're going to deal with the thing at the top. We're going to deal with the forces on the scale pan and we're going to deal with the whole lot as though it was one object, as though it was the whole, the, the, uh, yeah, as though it was one object, okay? Now, um, in this question here, I should just point out, uh, it tells us this is a light scale pan. So when I put the forces in here, I said that the scale pan will have a mass and there's a weight acting down. And actually, in this particular example, that one's not there, okay? S similar to the last example, um, when I showed you the last example, if you watched the last video, if you're familiar with these notes, we said we're going to write down three equations almost before we finish reading the question. We're going to read the paragraph, we're going to draw the diagram, we're going to write down the three equations that we need. We're going to do the same thing here. And in fact, I'm just going to sort of point at these in the book. Um, we're going to deal with the whole system that they've done in part A. We're going to deal with the object on the top, so that is... Uh, looking at the forces at, at A, which is the one I've just done for you on the piece of paper. And then we're going to deal with the elevator or the lift, or the, in this case, the scale pan. There's three equations there. Between those three equations, we should be able to find everything that's missing in the question they've asked us. Sometimes there'll be one thing missing, sometimes two things missing, sometimes three different things missing. But between the three equations, that should be enough. We should be able to find everything that they want us to find. Okay? Uh, again... There's no reason, from reading the paragraph in the question, from drawing the diagram, there's no reason to say that, the, that considering the whole system is the logical first thing to do. It just so happens that in this example, if you write that equation down first, you'll get the answer to part A first. My advice to you would be, consider the whole system and write this equation down. 
consider A and write down this equation. Consider C and write down this equation. Once you've got all three equations, then look at what they're asking you in part A, B and C and use the relevant bits. So again, we need to label them. So uh, the last thing I'm going to do, that might well be enough for you, but the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, show you how I would answer this question if I were if I were in an exam. Um, so the first thing I would do in an exam is I would be, I, I, I would I'd do exactly what I've done here. So I'd write down, um, consider A, I draw this diagram and I say at A vertically F equals MA, that equation, okay? And um, then I would just label that equation number one. Then I'd say, consider the whole system and I'd draw a new diagram, which would be like this. There's my whole system. There's a tension in the string. Pulling downwards, there is a mass of uh, not, well, 400 grams and 600 grams, so one kilogram. So one times G, mass times weight, uh, Sorry, mass times gravity gives us the weight. So one times G or G pulling down. So the whole system is going to give us. Um, so the whole considering the whole system vertically, apply F equals M A because we know the whole thing is accelerating. Tension pulling up. G pulling down. Equals the mass, which is one, times the acceleration, which is 0.5. I'd label that equation number two. And then I'd be saying. Um, consider the forces on the scale pan. I'm not going to write that down, you can hear me saying it. And then I draw pretty much the same uh, diagram as in the book. I like my forces to start at the object and point away from it. I don't, I find it confusing when the forces are kind of, uh, the arrow ends at the object. So even if in this case, the thing that's exerting this force is sitting inside the lift and pushing down on the floor, I like to take that diagram and re reorder it like this, just because it, it's it's uh, more helpful. In, in lots of questions, I might end up drawing out two diagrams, one just for me, really. Um, uh, so here we go. We've got, uh, in this case, we've got the tension pulling up. And, uh, no, let's see, they've got an S in the question. Um, and because I've rushed into this, I haven't checked, have I? Let's see. Um, Oh yeah, so there's an S pulling, S pushing down, and that is the the force exerted by this 400 gram force and the 600 gram force. Um, there's a tension pulling up. That S is pulling down, uh, and that is uh, mass, which is zero times gravity, which is 0.5. So that gives us uh, the S is equal to 10.3. Newtons. Okay, so oh, sorry. What we're supposed to be doing was showing you how to do this in the exam. So in the exam, I would write down a little bit more neatly, but I'd write down this stuff and I'd label it equation one. This stuff, I'd label it equation two. This stuff, label it equation three. Then I would look at all three equations and I'd go back to the question. The question says find the tension in the string. Looking at my three equations, this equation here has a tension in it. So I then, underneath that, I would write down for part A from equation number two, and then I'd solve that equation and find T, right? So T equals 0.5 plus G, and remember G is 9.8, so that's where my 10.3 comes from for my tension, okay? Then I'd write down part B. Part B says, find the force exerted on mass B by mass A, and I'd realize that this equation here tells me that force using Newton's third law by B on A is the same as by A, by B on A is the same force as by A on B. So I'd put in a note to explain that and I'd use this equation and I'd find uh, the, the thing I've labeled R here. And then the last part of the question says, find the force exerted on B by the scale pan. And that's gonna be the same as this S force that I've got pushing down, which is gonna be our 10.3 Newtons, okay? So that's the way I'd set it out in the exam. If, again, if you looked at my video on the uh, car and caravan problem in example seven, uh, sorry, example 11, you'll see the same idea applies. Write down all the equations. Once you've got all the equations written down, label them one, two, three, um, and then for part A, 
use those equations. Part B, use the equations, okay? So you need to have them labeled. You need to explain what you're doing for each equation, considering vertically, apply F equals MA in this situation, and so on. And then you need to say things like, from equation two, I get the following facts, okay? That's the way I set it on the exam. That's the way I do that one. Um, and again, it's gonna be the same few equations that you're gonna draw. It gets a little bit simpler if there's only one object in the lift as well, of course. Okay, that's two out of the four nasty examples done. Two more to go.